Introduction Vivek, did you enjoy the movie with your friends? No, Dad. My seat was quite uncomfortable. As a result, I could not concentrate on the movie. How did you spend the three hours in the cinema hall then? Dad, I busied myself in an interesting exercise. I calculated the total number of seats in the hall and compared it with the total number of chairs in our house. Wonderful, Vivek. What did you find? Dad, there were 200 seats in the hall. There are four chairs in our house. Therefore, the hall had 196 more seats than the chairs in our house. That's right, Vivek. However, there is a better way of expressing the comparison, you know. You can say that uh, the cinema hall had 50 times more seats than the chairs in our house. How did Vivek's father arrive at this conclusion? Vivek's father applied the concept of ratio to arrive at the conclusion. In this lesson, you will learn about ratio and proportion. Ratio We usually compare quantities and values by calculating their difference. For example, Suppose the weights of two friends, Varun and Arun, are 38 kgs and 35 kgs respectively. We say that Varun is heavier than Arun by 38 minus 35, that is 3 kgs. Similarly, suppose Ritu buys two shirts, one pink and the other blue, costing rupees 350 and rupees 250 respectively. We say that the pink shirt is costlier than the blue one by rupees 100. Comparison by difference does not make sense when we compare quantities, values that are wide apart. For example, suppose we compare a 6 inch long pencil with a 48 inches long wiper. The wiper is 42 inches longer than the pencil. However, the difference does not bring out clearly the extent of variation in the lengths of the wiper and the pencil. How else do we express the variation? Let us ask ourselves this question. How many pencils will cover the length of one wiper? The answer is 48 divided by 6, that is 8. In other words, the wiper is 8 times longer than the pencil. Expressing one quantity as so many times the other quantity is called a ratio. 48 divided by 6 is 8 divided by 1. 8 divided by 1 can also be written as 8 is to 1. Colon is the symbol used to denote ratio. Let us look at another example of ratio. Tushar bought a pair of jeans for Rs. 1500 and a belt for Rs. 250. The cost of jeans is how many times the cost of belt? To calculate the ratio, first divide 1500 by 250. It is the same as 6 divided by 1. Express it as a ratio that is 6 is to 1. Therefore, we can say that the pair of jeans is six times more costly than the belt. Comparison of quantities, values, measured in different units. Vinita has 100 milliliter of milk in a cup and 2 liters of milk in a jug. 100 is greater than 2. Can we say that the quantity of milk in the cup is greater than the quantity of milk in the jug? No. The reason is, the two quantities are measured in two different units and hence cannot be compared. What should we do to make them comparable? We should express them both in the same units. Express 2 liters as 2000 milliliter. Now the quantities are comparable. Let us find the ratio. 2000 by 100 is the same as 20 by 1 or 20 is to 1. Therefore, the milk in the jug is 20 times more than the milk in the cup. Hari has bought a chewing gum for 50 paise. His friend Shiv has bought a packet of biscuits for rupees 20. Who spent more money and by how many times? 
Before comparing, we express rupees 20 as 2000 paise. Now we can work out the ratio. 2000 by 50 is 40 by 1, which is equal to 40 is to 1. We can therefore say that Shiv has spent 40 times more money than Hari. Equivalent ratios. Ritesh is learning to calculate ratios and is enjoying it. But there is one thing that is confusing him. Let us see what it is. He first calculated the ratio of boys in his class to girls in his class as 3 is to 1. He then calculated the ratio of notebooks to books in his bag. The ratio works out to be 3 is to 1. Ritesh wonders, can two ratios be same? Yes, they can be. What the first one tells us is that boys are three times more than the girls in Ritesh's class. The second ratio tells us that the notebooks are three times more than the books in Ritesh's bag. Ratios that are equal when reduced to their lowest terms are known as equivalent ratios. Let us verify whether the following ratios are equivalent or not. Ram earns rupees 15,000 in a month and spends rupees 10,000. Express the earning and spending as a ratio. 15,000 by 10,000 is 15 by 10, which, when reduced to the lowest term, is equal to 3 by 2 or 3 is to 2. It means that out of every 3 rupees earned, Ram spends 2. Rahim earns rupees 21,000 in a month and spends rupees 14,000. Express the earning and spending as a ratio. 21,000 by 14,000 is 21 by 14, which, when reduced to lowest term, is equal to 3 by 2 or 3 is to 2. It means that out of every 3 rupees earned, Rahim also spends 2. The ratio for earning to spending for Ram and Rahim are equivalent. Division of quantities, values, according to ratios. Let us now use ratios to divide quantities and values. Two friends, Sia, 36 inches in height, and Pia, 48 inches in height, pluck seven ripe mangoes from a mango tree. They decide to share the mangoes in the ratio of their heights in inches. How many mangoes will each friend get to eat? Let us first find the ratio of their heights. The ratio of their heights is 3 is to 4. Sia and Pia will share the mangoes in the ratio 3 is to 4. It means that out of every 7 mangoes plucked, 3 will be eaten by Sia and 4 by Pia. Sia gets 3 out of 7 mangoes. Pia gets 4 out of 7 mangoes. Two brothers, Dev Jyot and Prem Jyot, buy a lottery ticket for rupees 100. Dev Jyot pays rupees 60, Prem Jyot pays rupees 40. They decide to share the lottery money in the same ratio. They win a lottery of rupees 1 lakh. How much should each brother get? Let us find first the ratio of their payments. Ratio of payment for lottery is 3 is to 2. Dev Jyot and Prem Jyot will share the lottery money in ratio 3 is to 2. It means that out of every 5 rupees 1, 3 will go to Dev Jyot and 2 will go to Prem Jyot. Dev Jyot's share in the lottery of rupees 1 lakh is rupees 60,000. Prem Jyot's share is rupees 40,000. Proportion Piyush and Amit are excellent painters. Recently, Piyush bought 20 paint brushes for rupees 240 from a stationery shop. Amit bought 15 identical brushes for rupees 180 from the same shop. Amit claims that the shopkeeper overcharged Piyush. Is he right? Let us see. First, work out the ratio of the two quantities. The ratio of quantities is 4 is to 3. 
then work out the ratio of the prices. The ratio of prices is 4 is to 3. It means that the ratio of quantities is equal to the ratio of prices. Therefore, Amit's claim is wrong. The shopkeeper charged Amit and Pius the same price for the brushes. When two ratios are equal, they are said to be in proportion. Ratios in proportion are represented as 20 is to 15, proportion 240 is to 180. This is the symbol used to denote proportion. Ratios in proportion are read as 20 is to 15 as 240 is to 180. Each number used in a proportion is called a term. 20, 15, 240 and 180 are terms. The first and the last terms are called the extreme terms. The second and the third terms are called the middle terms. Verification of ratios in proportion. Consider the two ratios. 40 is to 25 and 56 is to 35. 40 by 25 is same as 8 by 5, that is 8 is to 5. 56 by 35 is same as 8 by 5, that is 8 is to 5. Therefore, 40 is to 25 is equal to 56 is to 35. In other words, 40 is to 25 as 56 is to 35. Now consider these two ratios. 63 liters is to 35 liters and 28 kgs is to 21 kgs. 63 by 35 is equal to 9 by 5, that is 9 is to 5. 28 by 21 is equal to 4 by 3, that is 4 is to 3. Therefore, 63 ratio 35 is not equal to 28 ratio 21. We say that the ratios are not in proportion. Consider two more ratios. 36 minutes is to 180 seconds and 50 rupees is to 150 paise. 36 minutes by 180 seconds is same as 36 into 60 seconds divided by 180 seconds, which is equal to 12 is to 1. 50 rupees divided by 150 paise is same as 5000 paise divided by 150 paise, which is equal to 100 is to 3. Therefore, 36 minute is to 180 second is not equal to rupees 50 is to 150 paise. The ratios are not in proportion. Unitary method. Prerna is on her way to meet her grandmother who lives in a village which is 600 km away from her place. Her bus takes 12 hours to reach the village. What is the speed of the bus? Speed is distance covered by an object in one hour. Distance covered in 12 hours is equal to 600 km. Distance covered in one hour is equal to 600 divided by 12, which is equal to 50. Therefore, the speed of the bus is 50 km per hour. Had Prerna's grandmother's place been 1000 km away, in how many hours would Prerna have reached her grandmother's place? Time taken to cover 600 km is equal to 12 hours. Time taken to cover 1 km is 12 divided by 600 hours. Time taken to cover 1000 km is equal to 12 upon 600 into 1000, which equals 20 hours. Prerna would have reached her grandmother's house in 20 hours. The method of calculating the value of one first and then many is called the unitary method. Example of unitary method. The annual newspaper bill of the Bajpais is Rs. 1800. How much do they pay for newspaper in 4 months? Newspaper bill for 12 months 
is equal to rupees 1800 newspaper bill for one month is equal to rupees 1800 by 12 that is rupees 150 newspaper bill for four months is equal to rupees 150 into 4 is equal to rupees 600 summary let us summarize what we have learned expressing one quantity as so many times as the other quantity is called a ratio colon is the symbol used to denote a ratio quantities values are converted to the same units before expressing them as a ratio ratios that are equal when reduced to their lowest terms are known as equivalent ratios when two ratios are equal they are said to be in proportion this is the symbol used to indicate that two ratios are in proportion the method of calculating the value of one first and then many is called the unitary method.